Hey, what's up? This is Ben from Wad Prep, and I'm here to help you do CrossFit Hero Workout Murph. In this video, we're gonna talk about five creative ways that you can scale Murph appropriately. I have several other videos on YouTube and on Instagram and on Facebook teaching you all about Murph and how to get your best score, how to make sure you're doing it appropriately, and most importantly, how to honor the person that this workout is about and to frankly honor all fallen soldiers. But in today's video, we're gonna talk specifically to those of you who might need to scale Murph in order to get a good workout. And what I mean by a good workout is, while Murph is a hero workout, it's supposed to be really freaking difficult. It's supposed to be challenging. It should not leave you sore for three weeks. You shouldn't get rhabdo doing Murph. You shouldn't have blood all over your hands and be miserable for weeks to come. It's important to get a good workout because I think that is truly the essence of honoring this fallen soldier, Lieutenant Michael Murphy, and all of those uh, that we are honoring with Memorial Day. So with that, let's talk about five different ways that you can scale down Murph. Murph, as it's written, you're supposed to wear a weight vest and you're supposed to do a mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats, and then another mile run. Number one, the easiest and simplest way to modify Murph is to ditch the weight vest. Obviously, we'd all like to do Murph unpartitioned with a weight vest and get 35 minutes, but frankly, not all of us are that level of athlete. I'm not that level of athlete. So if I wanted to do Murph and not have it take an hour or longer, which I frankly think is a little bit, that's too long for a Murph you should probably scale down. If you wanna scale down Murph and make it more appropriate, just ditch the weight vest and you can still get a great workout doing all of the reps. If that's not enough, here are a couple other options. Number two, you can do what I like to call a half Murph. So basically you can still wear your weight vest if you want, but you're taking the reps and you're dividing them in half. That means rather than a one mile run, you're doing a half mile run. Rather than 100 pull-ups, you're doing 50. Rather than 200 push-ups, you're doing 100, and rather than 300 squats, you're doing 150, and then you're gonna finish it off with a half mile run. So exactly like it sounds, a half Murph is you literally just take the workout as written, split the reps and the running in half, there you have it, that's a half Murph. You could also do a third Murph, yes, that would be dividing it by three, or a quarter Murph. All of those are very viable options and they can get you a great workout on Memorial Day or whenever you choose to honor Murph and other fallen soldiers. Scaling option number three, and this is where we start to get a little bit more creative, and this isn't something that I see a lot of people do, but it is another great option, is to do a four round Murph, or you could do five rounds, or six rounds, or seven rounds, however you want. So in a four round Murph, or a, um, we'll call it Metcon Murph, you're doing four rounds of a half mile run, 25 pull-ups, 50 push-ups, and 75 squats. So if you do that and you do it four times, that would have all of the volume of a normal Murph, but because you're breaking up that run and because you're breaking up the reps, it's going to make the workout a lot more approachable. And yes, you could combine this four round Murph with a half Murph. So you'd be scaling down the reps to a half and then you do four rounds to get all of that work done. So there's so many different combinations that we can do. I'm, I want to give you permission to be creative. If your gym doesn't already have a bunch of preset scaling options that they want you to do, then by all means come up with a creative version of Murph that gets you the volume that you're after, that gets you the stimulus, and doesn't completely wreck you for weeks on end. Scaling option number four, this is another creative way that I, I don't really see people talk about, is I want you to take your weakest link and scale that appropriately and you can keep everything else as is. So for instance, let's say you know we have a run, we have pull-ups, push-ups, and a squat, and then another run. If, let's say, the pull-ups are your biggest limiting factor, you just can't do pull-ups. You can do everything else fine, and you're looking at Murph and you're like, I can't do Murph because I can't do pull-ups. Well, I disagree. What you can do is you can take the pull-ups and scale them down appropriately. So you could do Murph as it's written, but instead of 100 pull-ups, just do 50. You can scale your reps, or you can scale your ROM. What I mean by ROM is you're scaling your range of motion. So rather than doing, let's say, normal pull-ups, you could do 100 jumping pull-ups. You could do 100 ring rows or barbell rows, anything that emulates that pull-up. So I could do any sort of pull-up scaling variation. 
Yes, you could do banded pull-ups. Whatever makes that hardest movement more accessible for you, that's gonna help keep you moving and it's gonna get you a great workout. And I don't want you to feel bad about scaling down the movements that are more difficult for you. Remember, I always like to scale either reps or range of motion. So let's say the push-ups, which for me, I think the push-ups are the hardest part. If I wanted to scale the push-ups, what could I do? I could take the 200 push-ups and say, you know what, I'm only gonna do 100. I'm gonna scale down the reps, but I'm still gonna do push-ups as prescribed. I'm just not gonna do quite the same amount of volume. Or you could scale the range of motion, which for push-ups, you could do push-ups to a bench, do some sort of incline push-up, or you could do, uh, let's say, a weighted dumbbell press. Anything that emulates that push-up that makes it a little bit easier. Yes, you could do your push-ups from your knees, or if you wanted to, you could do normal plank push-ups, but to a reduced range of motion. You could stack a couple plates underneath your chest or a couple ab mats and only do half range of motion push-ups. That would all be valid, and it's a great way to make Murph more accessible for you. And then number five, this is, I think, the most underrated and the most awesome way to scale Murph, and that's to do a partner Murph. What better way to join forces with people at your gym to honor the fallen and do a Murph together as a team. So what that could look like is let's say Travis and I were doing Murph. Travis is the person behind the camera. He's waving at you right now. Uh, let's say Travis and I wanted to do Murph, but we both agreed that we need to scale down the movement a little bit. I love the idea of a you go, I go Murph with partner runs. So what that means is that Travis and I could do a one mile run, but we do it together. I, you can hold hands if you really want to, or we can just run side by side and, and suffer together in that run. But then when we get back, rather than doing all of the reps, we split the reps evenly and do a you go, I go thing. So until we get done our 100 pull-ups, it could be Travis goes and then I go. And once we accumulate 100 pull-ups, boom, we move on to the next push-ups. And he does sets of push-ups, I do sets of push-ups, we combined our scores, get to the 200, and so on and so forth with the air squats. And then of course, that final run that we do together as a team. I love the partner Murph, and I think it's something that's underutilized at a lot of CrossFit gyms. So there you have it, folks. Those are five simple, quick, effective ways to do Murph, still get a great workout, and most importantly, honor the person that it's supposed to honor. Because remember, this isn't about honoring our egos and trying to see who can get the best Murph score. What matters is that we're remembering the people who have sacrificed their lives to keep us free. So no matter where you're doing Murph from, let's remember to keep in mind the reason we're doing Murph. In the comments below this video, let me know, how are you going to scale Murph? Write it out for me. I would love to see how you are modifying Murph to get a great workout and honor the fall. And please let me know in the comments below. I'm sure there are a ton of really creative ways that we can do it. Remember, if you can't run, then you can substitute a row or a ski erg or a bike. There's so many different things to scale. I wanna see how are you scaling Murph? How is your gym scaling Murph? Leave it in the comments below. And I'm sure you're gonna inspire a couple other people to hit Murph the way that you're hitting it. And last but not least, please remember who we are honoring today with Murph. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please go to wadprep.com and you can get a ton more free training information. Uh, all you have to do is go to wadprep.com, pick which movement you need help with, and I would love to send you some free training. All you have to do is enter your name and email and I'll send it to you for free. Thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't. Be sure to smash the subscribe button and I will see you in next week's video. And oh, by the way, in the description below, we have several articles and lots of other videos specifically about this, the most famous CrossFit workout of all time, which is Murph. If you wanna get some additional Murph tips, if you wanna watch additional Murph content, I'll be sure to link to all of our other great Murph content below this video. All right, that's it, and I will see you next week.